I've conscripted a giant World War I LEGO army, and today we're gonna try something that has never been done before. This was my first LEGO World War I mock, and this was my second attempt. Now the main issue with both of these trench builds is as follows. Yeah, uh, they're pretty hard to move, and I'm uh, constantly in fear they're going to break. Ah! <laughs> I couldn't write it. As you will soon find out, building a World War I LEGO trench network is not as easy as it looks. But imagine if you were commanding a hundred miles of trenches at the same time. Well, with Supremacy 1914, you can do just that. Supremacy 1914 is a free online PvP strategy game where you take command of an entire nation during the First World War. Conscript your army with infantry, cavalry, tanks, and planes, using them to crush your neighbor into submission. Or you could form alliances, but mostly crush your enemies. I love the depth and complexity of Supremacy 1914, and to be honest, just how it looks and feels, and better yet, you can play it on PC and mobile. So what are you waiting for? It's time to subjugate your neighbors. Do it now! Click my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen. If you do it now, you'll get an exclusive gift, 15,000 gold, and one month of premium subscription for free. Don't wait long, because the deal will only last for 30 days. Now the answer is yes. I am going to pillage and plunder my previous LEGO trench build for parts, but mostly just the minifigures. Each one of these minifigures costs about 15 quid and what's left of my dignity. During the last Blitz weekend on United Bricks, I managed to snag three Canadians and six more British, also assembling two more British and an Aussie from a big bag of misprints. For the Germans, I got one more rifleman, but also a couple of new medics. Possibly the most interesting though, is the two World War I tank operators, but I don't have a tank to put them in, which does beg the question why I decided to buy them in the first place, but we are where we are. Now let's take these new recruits and add them to our armies. Now I do have even more good news. In my first two builds, the Germans had the basic pickle how, but the minifigures look so much better with the tan cover. Thankfully, I finally managed to get my hands on about 30, so let's swap them out. Now we've got an battle plan and we've definitely got the army to populate it. What we don't currently have are some universal building principles which will guarantee that every part can connect to every other part. Number one, every module must be built on the same sized base plate. Number two, every module must be aligned to the center of the base plate. Number three, every module must be the same height. And number four, every module's colors and building techniques must be consistent. If I can stick to these fundamental building principles, then in theory, I could build hundreds, maybe even thousands of trench modules, and they would all fit together perfectly. I am, however, completely broke, so I definitely won't be able to do that. However, a man can dream or stage an armed robbery. To be honest, so long as I get the Lego bricks, I really don't care. The next question to tackle is how do we make our trench look realistic and what shapes are required to make that happen? Trenches were never just big long straight lines, so we can't just go straight piece, straight piece, straight piece. No, we're gonna have to get a bit more creative than that. As well as the straight module, we will be using a corner module, a T-section module, a cross-section module, a machine gun position module, module and an end module. Simply by combining each of these modules together in various combinations and patterns, you can see that we can basically create any trench design that we want. Now with everything we've discussed and with the LEGO army on standby, let's assemble the first trench module. The straight module has now been completed, and here's a second straight module just to demonstrate how they fit together. Now if I add all these other templates, you should now see what I'm planning. Hopefully you'll agree with my decision to use dark brown for the mud, and reddish brown for the logs, and also light bluish grey for the outside of the build, and dark bluish grey for the inside. I want this build to look way more dark and gritty than my previous one. Now yes, I will be adding a lot more detail later in the video, so... Keep your opinions to yourself as we begin the corner module. The first corner module has been completed. Now, we've already built two straight modules, so let's see how they go together. Nice. We've got a lot more templates to build, so let's get to work. 
Using my two brain cells, I've combined the corner module that and the, and the straight module to create the T-section module. This trench module will facilitate a more complex trench system, enabling dead-end modules like machine gun positions or even a second line of trenches. By adding a T-section between our corner and straight modules, we just created new entry and access points. However, for a truly complex trench network, we're gonna need something a little bit bigger. And here it is, the first cross-section module. This will be the centerpiece of our LEGO World War I trench build because it allows for so many connections. By placing the cross-section module in the middle and surrounding it with our straight modules, corner module, and T-section module, you can see how this World War I LEGO build could scale infinitely. However, we do still only have walkways, and I think it's about time we built a machine gun position. Now yes, the observant amongst you may have witnessed something sad taking place. I've dismantled not one but two LEGO builds in order to make this video happen. I think it's worth it, but uh, the decision will be up to you. Finally, we can put some lead down range with our new machine gun module. This is a dead end module, and yes, you guessed it, should be faced at the enemy. This is where multi-connection modules like the T-section or cross-section come in handy. They allow us to create a firing position without it being the end of the trench. Let me give you a practical demonstration. End of the trench. That's it. However, if I add the machine gun position onto a T-section, then you can see the trench can continue while still getting the firing position. Now, that being said, sometimes we do still want an end piece, so we should build one. With the new end module completed, we now have at least one of every trench module we need to create a never-ending trench terror. However, not every 16x16 16 16 base plate will be occupied by trench. That's because some of them will be occupied by craters, kind of like this one that I've already built. Now, not every crater has to look the same. In fact, it's actually probably best they don't. So long as they follow the build principles discussed earlier, we can place them wherever we want. Having shamelessly ransacked even more of my old World War I LEGO builds, I can finally reveal the entire collection of trench modules. Ta-da! Professionalism. Let me just put the desk back up real quick and uh, carry on with a voiceover. Before we assemble the trench, let me remind you that this is part one. And in my Discord, we will be taking suggestions for new trench module expansions in the LEGO Showcase. Make sure you're subscribed for that. Now, if we have done this correctly and follow the build principles that we established at the start of the video, each module should be able to connect to every other module. So under the assumption that I haven't messed this up, let's, uh, let's give it a crack. So this is just a collection of all the various trench pieces that we have available. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move all the craters over here and we're going to start trying to build this up one piece at a time. I think what we should do is we should start from the front. So the most important feature would be the machine gun positions at the front and then we build backwards from there. Again, the cross section is going to be our, our like center piece that kind of holds it all together. So somewhere over here, what I would guess would work is if we get a T section here and we get a T section here. T section in the middle? Question mark? Maybe if, okay, so I just need a bit more space in the other direction to be honest. Right, what do we think? It's hard to tell from where I am, but I'm gonna spin this bad boy around. I think I've done a thing. Oh, I'm pretty happy with this modular trench layout, but the beauty is I can reorganize it whenever I want to. Now at this point, you might be thinking the build looks a bit basic. And you'd be right. However, as you've seen in the past, a detailing speed run can make or break a Lego build. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's certainly a good start, and uh, that's just the surface detailing. We've still got a lot more to do. Okay, finally, all of the detailing has been completed on the surface and in the trenches. The only thing left to do is place the British Army. The minifigures have been added to the build and with that let's do the final review.
And here we go. We've got a line of British infantry running down the middle to reinforce the front line where we've got three Canadians holding up and one Australian running over the top. Either side of the network, we've got two machine gun positions, a Mark V tank moving in in the background and a whole lot more cannon fodder with some tools back here and some ammunition back here. Now, for the big question, what would I change if I was to do this again? First of all, I don't like how these logs, you can see the logs are vertical instead of horizontal, I would definitely not do that. Also, the fact that I've had to join all of these together, literally just with one brick, like look at this, if I just pull this off, and I pull this off, I mean, this I suppose is quite cool to be fair. This is gonna be really easy to store, really easy to move. <laughs> incredibly convenient. Now again, I do want to create an expansion for this because I have got, well, to put it lightly, an entire army of German soldiers which have been entirely underutilized for this. And to be honest, because this trench network is actually so big, it, uh, it kind of feels a bit empty. There's 22 of them, but it doesn't really look like that. I almost might need the, the fake Lego minifigures back in just to support. If I had used the Germans for this, it might have actually felt a little bit more populated, but the Germans had the last defense, so it's only fair the Brits got this one. Whatever the case, if you think you could do better, or if you just have some Lego building suggestions, particularly for the episode two and other potential modules we could add to this build, join my Discord. Don't forget, Supremacy 1914 is a free online PvP strategy game based on World War One. Choose your strategy and fight battles all around the world. By clicking my link or scanning the QR code on screen within the next 30 days, you will get 15,000 gold and one month of premium subscription for free. Click link, choose nation, subjugate enemies through conquest.